Hello, it's Groundhog Peggy, and it's time for Groundhog Peggy School. And the groundhogs are just stomping all over each other to get in, but there's just no more seating room for them. I'm the only one. So anyhow, um, after a few conversations and thinking again about stuff I used to think about back when I started playing the fiddle, I decided that uh, I should make a, a Groundhog Music School video. Not that I'm teaching anybody or not that I know anything, because I don't even play... Uh, I don't even play on the porch anymore. Scared the neighbors will shoot me. And uh, so I just sort of, you know, hide in my groundhog den and play once in a while. Not even that much. But anyway, this song is called Waterbound. I think a lot of people might not know it because when I've mentioned it, they, uh, they seem to think of another tune. It, maybe I've got the wrong title for it. But I know it is Waterbound. I'll try to sing it so you hear what it is but it's really not in my key I'm in uh, standard tuning and I have a mute on here today because my Chromebook cancels out sounds when it records and they really come out sounding canceled out and recorded at the same time it's not a good sound I was hoping the mute would stop that from happening with the fiddle being up close to it uh, anyway it goes like this it's way too low for me to sing it, okay? Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home. Water bound and I can't get home. Down in North Carolina. Big creeks up and I can't get across. Big creeks up and I can't get across. Big creeks up and I can't get across. Stay with us till morning. And the fiddle part just does that alone. Anyway, <clears throat> that's the song. It has a whole bunch of all kinds of verses uh, that you can choose from if you want to ever play that. But I thought since it has very little fingering, uh, it'd be an easy one to kind of show some stuff. I put it in uh, standard tuning. I never played this one in standard tuning, so I'm a little lost and I'm kind of stuck on these strings down here because uh, I don't know. How, in, in the standard tuning, I wouldn't be able to get the drones and stuff that I normally get. Um, but I put it in standard tuning in case there's anybody who stumbles across this and doesn't want to mess with uh, weird tunings on their fiddle. I have the geared tuners on here, so it's not a problem for me to tune. But uh, if you were playing this in uh, sawmill tuning AE, AE, where you would take those two strings and match these, you know, play this one, tune this one to an A instead of a G, and this one to an E instead of a D, so you'd have, and then you'd have all those nice drones and you could go back and forth to octaves. Um, but I'm just doing it this way in case there's anybody who, um, is uh, in standard and, and that maybe that doesn't make sense but normally I I do G D G D instead of A E A E because it's it's less harsh I think it just sounds more mellow but uh, anyway the uh, notes on this are pretty simple because you're gonna take this string here the um, A string and you got finger one and it goes to finger two And then if you're in standard tuning, whoops, okay, if you were in, if you were in A-E-A-E, -E, you'd just have, you'd be on one and off there, but anyway. And then you're on the E string up here. So it's real simple, just kind of same notes. And then uh, on the 
the B part, you're on the E string. You're on three, two, one, open, back to two. Like that. Do that twice. You don't have to do you don't have to do that little thing that's you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You just the bare skeleton of the tune works out. Um anyhow um I've compared bowing with claw hammer bum ditty. Um, because uh, the um, what they call these days, it used to just be called the shuffle, and nowadays people call it the Nashville shuffle. Um, anyway, whatever you want to call it, it's like what they call the bum ditty on the claw hammer. So on the claw hammer, you're going. Let's see if I can put this. Bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty, bum ditty. And on the fiddle, you're going. Only. On the claw hammer, you wouldn't go bum diddy bum diddy bum. You wouldn't make them all even. You kind of, you kind of. The two middle notes are barely in existence because they're catapulting the next note. I mean, at least with the right hand. You're still making the notes with the left hand. Um, so. On the fiddle, I feel like, for me, it's the same way for a Nashville shuffle. It's instead of me going... I'm more like, you know... And I might... Um, in other words... Instead of ironing it at all out flat where the notes are equal and it sounds very contrived and the fingering sounds very contrived with the notes. I prefer a um, more of an improvisatory, is that a word? Anyway, <laughs> uh, more of a non-contrived, off the cuff kind of a feeling. And I did get off a of Nashville shuffle too. Let me just stay on. I think I stayed on it. So my my own Nashville shuffle, for whatever it's worth, you might want to know about it just so you know not to do that terrible thing that I do. But it's um uh, it's well the two middle notes are like an elastic band that's gonna snap the next note or like it's gonna catapult the next note at least on the on this okay I can't that's an exaggeration and then I get off of Nashville shuffle quite a bit because I I discovered that although on the banjo, the bum ditties just really drive the thing along and they don't ever get uh, boring. On the fiddle, the uh, Nashville shuffles get really super boring when you do it constantly. So I've it, the ideal situation is if there's a claw hammer person bum ditty in along with you, then you could jump in and out of Nashville shuffle and do other things that take up the same amount of space in the tune that the that a, a Nashville shuffle or a few sets of Nashville shuffle would take up to fill in that you know that those gaps where you're not Nashville shuffling and then jump back in if you want or stay out or whatever and that would be the ideal situation because the claw hammer would keep that feeling going for you but if you don't have a claw hammer banjo player you just got to keep that feeling going for you yourself and what I did in the beginning, now I have a recording studio thing on the computer, so I can put Claw Hammer Banjo on there. 
But it, when I was first playing the fiddle, I didn't have that. I, I could play the banjo, but I never did figure out a way to play the banjo and the fiddle at the same time. So it didn't help me. So <clears throat> I um I think when I started out, I, I just did more Nashville shuffle. <laughs> And then I started getting away from it. And I just, I found, you know, all the things you do in between the Nashville shuffle that fit rhythmically that you might use during the same amount of time. I don't know, what is it? It might be like eight beats for two Nashville shuffles where you go, you go down, up. And that's what, I don't think of the in-betweens. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I think of the, and I think of the, the things as just a changing of direction. And like I said, they sort of catapult the direction. That's my my thinking. I, I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that way, but you know, everybody can think whichever way they want. I'm just saying that's how I think of it. Um and I totally lost my train of thought, but uh any anything else you do has that feeling where you're being catapulted to the next, you know. And sometimes when I get on the recording studio and I'm singing a song and I don't, I, you know, I don't know really what to do with fancy licks to put on the fiddle. So I'll just, you know, play some, you know, water bound and can't get home. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Water bound and can't get home. Water bound and can't get home. Usually I know because I'm in the right tuning. This this I'm not in the right tuning for this. Um, so that's my excuse for not knowing. Anyway, I just do that kind of chords or or even just a one finger thing and and just Nashville shuffle along to give it that bum ditty kind of a feel. Uh, and if you're singing, it doesn't get that boring. But a lot of times when you end the phrases, well, you wouldn't do it on the banjo, but on the fiddle, you would rock the bow because on the banjo, not at the end of phrases, but on the banjo. You, You'll throw in some drop thumbs once in a while if you get into double thumbing. You can't do that bum ditty style. Um, but when you throw in some drop thumbs, what you're doing is you're staying with your rhythm, but you're just adding one more string in there. Usually it's a drone string that fits right in there. On the fiddle, you do that by rocking the bow. That's my thought. People could disagree, but to me, rocking the bow is the same as drop thumb on the banjo. It's what you're doing is you are, um, let me do it on, on this. I'm going to hold this down and pretend like I'm in A, E, A, E. So you're still, it's the same. As far as your bow, your perception of your note is, it's da, 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 da. It's like. Da, 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 da. But you're dropping that little sneaky, you know, like a drop thumb, but it's a, a bow rock. Da, 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 da. Uh, let me. I, I started the wrong way. Let me see. Here. So it's just a thing you drop in there, um, which is so much easier in, in um, AEAE tuning. But it can be done, like I said, if I, if I think, if I can remember 
that I'm in standard tuning, you know, I can sometimes get it. So that, that works out good. Sometimes not just at the beginning phrases, or I mean the ending phrases, but at beginning phrases or anywhere in between. Just try it and see where it fits. Um, then there's another thing uh, that I like to do that I've heard it called Texas bow and Missouri bow and Kentucky bow, and I guess you can name it any kind of bow you want to name it. Uh, but um, it's a driving thing where you're just going, it, and you're, you're not Nashville shuffling, but you're driving this thing like. Really, Nashville shuffle is that too, because you're. But this is more like you're just driving it, and you. You put this is a very handy thing that you can put anywhere, and you're um, you'll either hammer on or slur to get another note going while you're just driving that bow without the Nashville shuffle. See. <clears throat> okay. And there's all kinds of names for the other stuff that you would do in between, and I don't remember them. And you know, sometimes it's uh, I think they used to call that one on on fiddle hangout. The old people that used to be on there a long time ago. That, uh, most of them aren't there. Some might be, but they had a name. They called it. I think they called it the smooth shuffle. Uh, might also. Maybe that's the same one. It's called rag bow, but I'm not sure about it. It doesn't matter what the names. People named them. So they could talk about them, but usually you don't need to. You need to play it, you know, not really talk about it. But it's handy to be able to talk about it. But anyhow, um, it would be like instead of so. Um, and then it, there's an opportunity for a, a, um, a bow rocking in there because it's long, long, short, short. So you can do that too. I don't know if this will make any sense or help anybody. I feel like it's it's hard to talk about. Even with a fiddle in your hand, it's hard to talk about. But basically, take some simple notes or simple tune where the notes aren't complicated and fiddle around with uh, Nashville Shuffle or anything that fits in that category that you know has probably got a name, but you don't know the name, but just try and see. And then... Um, Put them all together in any way that makes you happy. And the first way to do that would be to stick close to Nashville Shuffle, I think. So that's different than going... Because I, I um, pulled off there. So you can try stuff like that. Do something different with your fingers, or with your bow, or with both. I'm off in the... So it's like... So there's a Nashville shuffle in there, but it's... That's another thing I like to do. Slide up. So this is better. It gives it a little more of a character to it, I guess. If you instead of going, what part was I on? That's nice, you know. 
But if you go... It just gives it a little more of its own character. It comes alive. In my mind, anyway, that's the way I do it. Um, so you have a choice of... Uh, Or you could give it a little character, you know. Or even if you wanted to. Whoops, I missed it. Okay, um, that's, I guess that's everything that I've tried to talk about with people. Uh, then, uh, there was one conversation where people were saying that they, uh, would prefer less notes and I know I always what I tell people is I like to get down to the like whittle it down to the melodic contour like for instance Soldier's Joy let's see it's in D and most people play it like that uh, well I won't say most people a lot of people you hear it a lot very commonly played like a, a hornpipe um, I don't really play hornpipes it's too much too much of that kind of stuff um, I do play Fisher's horn prop, horn pipe. I think I have that on a YouTube. I think I played it on viola, on the live YouTube one time. Not live YouTube, but on the where you could see me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I do play that once in a while, and I like that one. I probably change it a lot from an actual horn pipe. But Soldier's Joy is played as a horn pipe a whole bunch, and it maybe it's supposed to be. Da -da -da. I don't really want to do that. So, uh, I it, it, there's actually a song uh, built on Soldier's Hornpipe where somebody did follow the, the melodic contour, which means the, the um, direction that the whole thing goes and where it goes to. And that would also be, you know, the, the uh, chord progressions that it uses and all that kind of stuff. Like, just where is it going when it's doing this? And it's going, you know, it's going, so it's, there's a simpler way of looking at that melody, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, there was an old song, it, ca it was called, um, Love Somebody. Love somebody, yes I do, love somebody, yes I do, love somebody, yes I do. Either it's too early for me or nothing is in my right vocal range. I love somebody and it might be you. Twice 16 is 32. Twice 16. Instead of going. It's twice 16 is 32. So that way you're just doing something like. Instead of all that. Instead of doing all that, you're going, you're just uh, going like this. Uh, you're not that, you're going. It's an open string right there. Uh, D string open and then three on the A string and then one on the D string and then you're up on the E string And then on the B part, you could just do... Twice 16. I can't get up there and I can't get down there. But anyway, twice 16 is 32. Twice 16 is 32. So, 
you would just add your um, shuffles and stuff on that. And it and to me, that's the way I play it. it. Maybe it's amateur and more simple, but I like it that way, you know. <laughs> cool just like that so I'm happy with it so other people might be happy to play it that way too um, just uh, put your Nashville shuffles in <laughs> sounds good if you put a bow rock on that To it to give it the feeling that it you know is like begging for and then and you could use a double stop there to help it or I like that double stop because it's a it's like a G chord but you don't even need to do that fingers all down. And so forth. Anyway, I, I might have wandered and meandered and not, and made no sense, but that's Groundhog Music School for now, because now it's time for me to have a cup of coffee and get out of this hot room to go upstairs to the hot room up there. Or maybe to the hot front porch, uh, wherever wherever I go, and have another cup of coffee. So, um, happy fiddling, and bye. <laughs>